All right, we all know the rules, guys. We keep our mics off. Uh, um, Valente, Fifi, your hand is up. I don't know if you have anything. Remember, keep your hands up. If you have a question, feel free to let me know where you are lost, like we've been doing. We've been doing so well, you know. Try to stay in a quiet area so that we don't have noise should you be using your mic to explain something because everyone can hear you, all right? And we can pick up all the background noises. We're trying as much as possible to make the class bearable for everyone. Some of us are using earphones, so the sound goes straight into those ears. You know what I mean? Awesome. Okay, let's start. Okay, I'm just still allowing people into the class. Sorry, people are just, people have issues every day logging in. I still don't understand why. Okay, all good. We are good to go. Let's kick the ball rolling. Lost five minutes. Welcome everybody to lesson two of our Momentum Grade 12 session. Yesterday we started with our Grade um, 12 Momentum and we did lesson one. All right, we did lesson one. Um, no, tomorrow is a Sunday, Tokelo. We do not have a class. Okay. Now, a quick recap, very fast. We spoke about um, the definition of momentum, saying it's the product of mass and velocity. And I told you when you see your mom, quickly do that definition. You need to make sure your definition is in place product of mass and velocity, it is a vector quantity because we're working alongside velocity. So the momentum of a body um, is a measure of its velocity and its mass. And because velocity is involved, it then gives us a vector quantity, which means magnitude and direction involved as well. All right. We said we can represent this with arrows and the length will tell us the magnitude while the arrows will tell us the direction. Very key. We looked at a few examples. You know, here we're just substituting and we said main things, two main things, your conversions, please. Your conversions are important. We converted mass yesterday and we converted time from grams to kilogram and kilometers per hour to meters per second. So I'm just trying to bring in a lot of grade 10 work and grade 11. Then we went to, we spoke about change in momentum. And I'm gonna say something to buttress what we said yesterday. We said, we're gonna have two different types of momentum changing. But the first one we're gonna look at, which was what we looked at yesterday, was to look at um, the mass being constant. It means we are now talking about just one object. 
and the momentum changing okay and the momentum changes because the velocity changes you also remember that we did some extensive calculations on this yesterday so blah 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 and on and on we did change in momentum um this page is very important it helps you quickly to solve a few questions all right um magnitude of change in momentum if they are in opposite directions we add same direction we subtract what about the direction if they are in opposite direction the change in momentum will always be in the direction of the final if they are in the same direction and the speed is increasing change in momentum will be in the same direction all right um as the final let me let me let me add this you can add this as final so we refer to everything is made reference to the final momentum all right decrease in speed change in momentum will be in the opposite direction of final momentum so that everything is in reference so we're comparing everything to final momentum again opposite directions the change in momentum would be in the direction of the final momentum same direction but if the speed is increasing the change in momentum will be in the same direction as final momentum if they are if the speed is decreasing the change in momentum will be in the opposite direction of the final so that we know that everything has reference to the final momentum i hope that helps okay look along the line um like i said i love to do a lot of questions will be today you're gonna have questions to do at home i promise you by the end of today's session your tomorrow you would have a lot of work to to get done okay we spoke about the this is where we ended the class yesterday changing momentum so i'm taking it afresh we said changing momentum is m vf minus vi okay and we brought in newton's second law please we must be able to state newton's second law we're going to do that today all right and then we came up and said oh there's something called f net delta t and that gave us impulse and this is where we are going to start today okay uh let's now start from here all right so i'm starting from what we did yesterday uh momentum impulse theorem the momentum impulse theorem we're going to start writing notes now momentum impulse theorem that was established yesterday so there we go momentum impulse um momentum actually change in momentum and impulse one second all right change in momentum we did that yesterday but i quickly want to stay on that again impulse theorem so our change in momentum can then be equated in magnitude to impulse don't forget our definition impulse is the product of net force and the time taken for the force to act we said these two are equal in magnitude okay um we can therefore say f net is equal to delta p over delta t f net is therefore equal to i want us to change these two words f net is equal to delta p over delta t let's change this into words it's going to mean that the net force acting on an object the net force acting on an object is equal to the rate of change now when we say rate of change that talks about time of momentum you need to know this this my dear learners 
is now referred to as Newton's second law. Newton's second law in terms of momentum. So an examiner would ask you to state the Newton's second law in terms of momentum. And that's the definition there. The net force acting on an object. Like guys, I think this is very easy if you know how to use your formula. The net force on an object, that's the first part. This sign says equal to, that is that, to the rate of change. Once we say rate, check, of momentum, you see, once you say rate, time, change of momentum, and you're done. That is how to remember your definitions. All right? That is how to remember. We just take that formula and throw it into words. Let's revise grade 11 quickly. Um, grade 11 definition. Grade 11, Newton's second law. I'm sure we all know this. Newton's second law. If we were here, um, I was going to ask someone to define. But what does it say? When a net force, when a net force acts on an object, the object will accelerate in the direction of the net force. All right, the acceleration is directly proportional, directly proportional, this you mustn't forget guys, to the net force and inversely proportional to the mass. And here we say F net equals to MA. F net equals to MA. And I need you to see that these two formulas are actually the same. Yes, Takelo, when a network, oh, you are, thank you so much. Thank you so much. You're giving me Newton's second law. Mm, you type so fast. All right, so the examiner, when the examiner asks you to state Newton's second law, go ahead with the grade 11 one. But when they say state Newton's second law in terms of momentum, you go ahead with the grade 12 one. Please take note. All right, if they specify in terms of momentum, you cannot use your grade 11. You'll have to use the grade 12 definition. I hope we are okay, guys. And look, if you are a mathematical person, you can actually prove that this is equal to that. F, uh, delta P over delta T is actually equal to MA. You should be able to prove that. Let's do something very nice quickly today. Let's, ch let's check something. Um, guys, are you okay with the slide? I want to move on quickly. Are you okay? Thumbs up quickly. Okay with what we did this morning, just a continuation of what we spoke about yesterday. Me, your hand is up. I don't know if you have a question. Bonolo, hand is up. Bonolo Pasha, hand is up. And I'm not sure if you have a question. You want to raise a concern quickly. Do you want to do that for me? Oh, hand is down. Me, your hand is up. Okay, we can move forward. Beautiful. Now, check something. Let's play. I just want to play a, a little bit this morning. I want to play around with physics a little bit. Um, just want to enjoy something with physics this morning. Let's see. Do I have a new message? All right, we're good. Check this. Okay, Fnet 
is equal to delta P over delta T. What is the unit of momentum? The unit of momentum is kg meters per second. What is time? Time is in seconds. I want us to, I want to quickly show you one way examiners are going to test you. All right, thank you. Kg meters. Now, can we do maths? Can we do a bit of maths? What will this be? Kg meters per second. Remember, uh, if it's the same base and we are dividing, we subtract the exponent. All right? This becomes negative 2. Please, the S will not cancel. Now, this is now just a grade 10 math, all right? S to the power negative 1 over S to the power 1. Because they are the same base, what do we do? We subtract, and that gives us S to the power of negative 2. Okay, good. So this is what we have. Now, I want you to see something. So it means F net can be measured as kilogram meter per second square. Wait, and what is the unit of net force? It is Newton. Ah, this is what you call equivalent units. Let me let me let me let me show you what I will do. Which one of the following? Look at this. I'm going to create a question. I, I I like to be an examiner one day. Which one of the following is equivalent to the unit of force? A, B, C, D. Check how check my answers now. Check my options. Newton second. Newton per second. Kilogram meter per second. Kilogram meters per second squared. Somebody's going to say ah 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 ah. Minier, you never taught us this one. Because what you are expecting is to say, I'm expecting what? Newtons. But here you are seeing so many options. Newton second, Newton per second. You even raise your hand in the exam. Say, I think there's a problem with this question. No, examiner is playing around with you. How would I have approached this question if I'm an exam, if I'm a learner? Examiner says force. Check what I will do. I know that force. Is, is measured in Newton, right? Newton. But I know it is MA. Watch this. I'm coming in a, in a different direction. Ah, I know this is in Newtons. What is the unit of mass? Kilogram. What is the unit of acceleration? Meters per... Oh, beautiful. Do you see how we got there? And look at the answer again. Our correct answer is D. So this is one of the things you would find in multiple choice. Please, I'm trying to expose you now to how grade 12 questions are tested. So you see a question now in units. There's no need to stress. Write down the unit of each of the variable you have and work it out. Did this make sense? Let me know. Did this make sense quickly, guys? Is my answer, my option D, okay? Nini, Nini also gave me D. Did it make sense? All right. Please, I, I played with you. Make sure you expose yourself to questions. Make sure you expose yourself. Guys, you need to expose yourself. Uh, John Modi says, Zwane, I have hands raised. You want to type a question? You want to talk to me quickly? 30 seconds. Let's deal with your hand that is raised. Modi say, John, uh, Grace Levu. Please check your hand is raised and it means probably you have something to say or you are lost. If that hand is still up, um, I won't be so comfortable in moving forward if you are lost. Please repeat the explanation. Thank you, Grace. All right. Thank you, Grace, for that question. I'll repeat. So put your hands down now. Okay. Ritabile, your hand is up. John, Modise, hand up. Okay, I think that's a mistake there. 
All right. I should repeat the explanation. Okay. Look, I'm saying, even if you did not know what I did in the first place, which one of the following is equivalent to the unit of force? And what you know is that force can be, uh, force is measured in Newton. But boom, here's the surprise. There's no Newton in your options. You go and write the formula and start playing around. I could create a, a, a lot more here, all right? We could create a lot more, which we are going to do. Then you check, okay, force is measured in Newton. But what is mass measured in? Mass is measured in kilograms. What is acceleration measured in? Acceleration is measured in meters per second squared. Oh, so since force is measured in Newtons, and there's no Newtons here, it means Newton is equivalent to kilogram meter per second squared. You got it now. Beautiful. So across the topics, we're going to get a whole lot of this. All right. This is done. Beautiful now. So let's move forward. So guys, what did we achieve this morning? This morning we learned now how to define Newton's second law in terms of momentum. Sun delay. So said to prove that impulse and momentum has the same unit, would you then say um, F net times delta T? Yes. Yes, you can prove that they have the same unit. You can prove that they have the same unit. So this is your change in momentum, and this is your impulse. All right. So what kilogram meters per second? Um, we did that. And what is this? F net is what newtons. Is that fine? Then check. Now I know my newtons. Check. We came up with this that newtons can be written as that. So this is kilogram meters per second times s to the power one and you know that if you are multiplying with the same base what do you do you add up the exponent this becomes that and this is minus two plus one which would give us what negative one and we the we back there so you bring in your laws of exponents okay so those are things that we need to learn as we go on all right guys we're good so it means now we can calculate impulse. I want to run through concepts quickly, and then we look at questions together. We can calculate impulse, and we can calculate time. Lungile, hand is up. Please talk to me. Hand is up. Talk to me. Two objects in contact. I'm still talking about impulse. Two objects in contact, two or more. All right, guys, if I have two objects, so when we look at questions now, we're just going to be flowing, you know? We won't need to be explaining concept again. So follow me, follow me. If I have two objects, A and B, there's something I know according to the law of physics that we learned in grade 11. Can somebody tell me what you think would be happening? in terms of the forces exerted by object A on B and object B on A. Ayanda, which slide are you referring to? The first slide. Okay, guys, please give me a response to this question while I'm trying to sort out Ayanda. Um, Ayanda, I'm not sure which slide. This. If it's this, all we did was saying, very fast. We came up with this formula yesterday and now divide both sides by delta T. F net equals to delta P over delta T. And that's Newton's second law in terms of momentum. Net force acting on an object is equal to the rate of change of momentum. So we can use that. And I'm going to deal with this just now. I'm going to deal with a lot of explanations on that just now. All right. I hope we're okay there, Ayanda. Okay, guys, quickly, Newton's third law here. Oh, yes, you guys are saying Newton's third law. Lovely, lovely. So this is physics. We're not going to say you guys know the laws. We are going to state every law, Newton's third law. What does that tell us? 
if object A exerts a force on object B, what happens? Object B will simultaneous, that word is important, exert a force on object A, all right, which is equal in magnitude magnitude opposite in what direction somebody saying why are we bringing this in i want to show you something in direction okay all right sorted everybody everybody sorted there we all agree with that we did that in grade 11. we're even talking about universal gravitation we spoke about um electrostatics using the same force the forces are equal of equal magnitude but opposite in direction now please i want you to watch something here it means that the force that a exerts on b is the same in magnitude okay watch this what does this imply to us what does this imply what can you tell me about the time of contact? Please listen to my next statement. The time of contact. If A is in contact with B for three seconds, B will also be in contact with A for three seconds. Very simple, guys. If you go right now and touch your wall, you are touching the wall for two seconds. The wall is also touching you for two seconds. Immediately you lift up your hand from the wall. What happens? There's no more contact. It means the time of contact between A and B, or let me say time of A on B will also be equal to time of contact between B on A. I hope that's making sense. Number one, from Newton's third law, grid 11, we've established F of A and F of B are equal. The force that A exerts on B is equal to the force that B exerts on A. What about the time of contact? They are both in contact at the same time. What does this mean? It therefore means that the impulse of A will be the same as the impulse. Please, this is very important. The impulse of A will therefore be the same as the impulse. I'm going to go somewhere now. I can therefore say, oh, the impulse of A is equal to the change in momentum of B from yesterday. Mm, let's connect. Impulse of A and impulse of B are the same. F net times delta T. Guys, please, I want us to uh, get somewhere quickly. Impulse of A and impulse of B are the same, but impulse is equal in magnitude to change in momentum. So I change the language. Which means an examiner can tell you F net times delta T of A would be equal to M B V F B minus V I B. I am using this quickly to open your mind that physics has um, a lot of manipulations. Uh, Pauline, no, impulse doesn't, we're not going to use a single symbol. It's just going to say, we're going to write it in full, impulse. All right? We're just going to write it in full, impulse. Okay. All right. So, guys, please, I am trying to open your mind. When we start looking at questions, you're going to enjoy this. You're really going to love this. And this has practical life applications. Okay? 
Uh, Tokelo, we're not going to mention inelastic collisions now. We will deal with that later when we start dealing with collisions. Okay. All right. I saw somebody with a thumbs down. Risana, please, what is the challenge quickly? Were you in class yesterday? Risana, quickly respond by typing because I want to go into applications before we look at collisions. Yes, sir. I was in class yesterday. Okay. Do you remember that we said impulse and change in momentum are equal? In yes, I remember that. Okay, let's quickly talk together. Newton's third law. Do you agree that the force on A is equal to the force of A on B is equal to the force of B on A? Yes, sir. All right, beautiful. Now, do you agree that the time in contact will be the same? That's what I'm confused to say. Okay, Tokolo. Uh, no, sorry. Uh, who am I talking to now? Rizana, right? Yes, sir. Rizana, you are holding you are holding your pen. Is that okay? Yes, sir. Okay, so you are in contact with your pen at the moment. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to count five. One, two, three, four, five. You were in contact with your pen for five seconds. Yes, sir. How long was your pen in contact with you? Five seconds. Oh. Absolutely. Makes sense now, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so if I then tell you to calculate impulse, you will have said the impulse of A will be F net of A multiplied by what? Delta T of A. Make sense? Yes, sir. But F net of A is equal to F net of B. Ooh. Newton's third law. Okay. Delta T of A is equal to delta T of B. Same time of contact. Make mm -hmm. sense now? Yes, sir. That's why we said the impulse of A and the impulse of B, as long as they're in contact, are the same. Ariela, mm -hmm. I think I've also answered your question now. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Okay. You're welcome. Ayanda, yes. Impulse is equal to change in magnitude. That was what we ended with yesterday. Ariela, second part also done. Great. Thank you for those questions. I love them. Now, guys, what I did on the right was just quickly show you something which would lead me to my next, um, my next concept. So here we are saying, according to Newton's third law, when I have two objects, is that okay? Two objects, F net times delta T, the impulse of one will be equal to the impulse of the other. Please, I want you to follow me now. I am now doing applications. I want to do applications for about 10, 15 minutes, and then we do collisions. Then we can run through questions together. Now, please watch and listen carefully. So far, so good. we all on the same page. All right. Um, we said, remember this, F net is equal to delta P over delta T. Just quickly put this for me. Application. Let's write this. Application. Now, let's look at mathematical relationship, please. Follow. I'm going to be slow now. F net is equal to delta P over delta T. If delta P is constant, if the change in momentum is constant, all right? So I'm going to say... For the same change in momentum, for the same change in momentum, please, that statement is very key. Never talk about um, directly proportional, inversely proportional, if you don't have a constant variable. So our constant variable is the change in momentum, which we dealt with, right? The net force is inversely proportional, is inversely proportional to time. Hmm. Somebody is saying, oh my God, I'm lost. Please, before you raise your hand or give me a thumbs down, let me explain. The longer the time of contact, the longer the time of contact, the smaller the
the force of impact. Please listen carefully. The longer the time of, I'm going to bring you life, real life examples, the smaller the force of impact. What are we saying? When time increases, you are blessing. Can you please hold on, guys? Already thumbs down. Wait. The longer the time of contact, the smaller the force of impact. I'm trying to explain that. Already giving me thumbs down. Relax. As time increases, the force experienced will decrease. I'm going to give you, I know you are lost, but I'm going to give you real life examples to bring you into reality of what I'm saying. All right. I'm going to create two scenarios for you. Please, I'm going to need your participation here. Like I said, I'm going to be slow. A and B. Okay. Um, I've got a car here. Okay. I've got uh, the same car here. All right, I don't even know where the front of the car is. It's a very funny car. Let's put the front there. Okay, don't mind my dad runs. We're going that way. Okay, offense is not laughing. Rizana, why are you guys laughing? It's, it's communication that's important here. Okay, this guy, whether it's moving forward or reversing, I don't know. But here, there is um, a pothole. The road is bad. Or we have um, speed humps, okay? We have speed humps. So I am creating the same scenario. Please, I want you to get this. Those of you that gave me thumbs down, I said, relax. I'm going to ask you my question now again, and then I'll see whether I still have thumbs down. These guys are driving at the same speed, right? Driver A slows down because there's a speed hump and moves over this speed hump slowly. Driver B did not slow down, moved over this speed hump very fast. Which one will feel more force, A or B? I'm sure you've experienced this. Everyone has experienced this, A or B. Come on, Taiba, why are you laughing now? You know when you drive in and the driver did not see the speed hump and then uh, everybody seems to jump up and even shout in the car. Okay, I'm glad we all are saying B. So we are saying um, a bigger force, a bigger force. Here, a smaller force. We agree. You don't feel the pain. Which one? Okay, guys, let's stop. Let me type this here. Uh, stop, stop typing now. Stop typing so that I know where the answers stop. All right, guys, I have a new question for you. Which one spent more time on the speed hump? A or B? Please stop typing your answers now. Ah, I see. So we are saying... Small time here, right? A, short time. And here, we have a longer time. Okay. Thank you. Stop typing now. Okay, I'm going to say stop typing. I want to see my answers. I'm going to ask a question now. Do you, um, do you now understand this statement that says the longer the time no, 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 I think I missed my time. Slowly. No, I missed the time. This one is a long time because we're moving slowly. Longer time. And here, short time. Sorry. Okay. Now, do you now understand the statement? 
when I said the longer the time of contact, the smaller the force of impact. Yes, um, I, I swapped it, Malefe, thank you. Is it now making sense? Because I'm going to go into more applications now. Where is this applicable? All right. Can I ask you something? All right, beautiful. Anybody with a thumbs down on my explanation? Lumka, Lumka, please talk to me. Lumka? Lumka, quickly, please talk to me. Unmute yourself. I want to know where you are lost, Lumka, so that I can quickly help you. Before I go into exam questions now, uh, exam applicable questions. Okay. Lumka has disappeared. All right, Lumka, please type if you're going to type. But we're saying the longer. Look, I'll give you a very simple example. Another simple example. Imagine your bed is a wood. You know days when you come back from school and you're tired and you're just for... I do that coming back from work. I'm, I don't even want to remove my shoe. I just want to just lie on the bed there, free fall, boom. Imagine your bed is a wood. Okay, so I don't know how to unmute myself. All right, okay. Uh, Gray, so what does the symbol after Fnet on the left side of the screen? Oh, this one talks about proportionality. 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 And because I said one over, it means inversely proportional. All right. It's okay, though. don't sense anything. <laughs> All right. Okay, so Lumka, I'm saying, uh, Lumka, please do re-explain. Okay, Lumka, what we're saying is this. the law, Anything that takes time will reduce the force, okay? As time increases, force decreases. When you go to a bed shop, what do you do? You press how soft the bed is. Why? It takes time. Your body gets into the bed gradually. Imagine your bed is a wood. Do you just jump and, you know... Just throw yourself over. No. Why? On a bed, when you just jump over the bed, it takes time. Your body goes into the bed with time because it is soft. Right? But with a wood, ah, the time is very short. You will feel pain. As long as time is short, force will increase. I'll give you some examples. I'll give you more examples. Lumka, quickly respond to, oh, you're good. Which one would you prefer me to hit you with, a pillow or a wood? Pillow or wood? I've got wood, same size. I've got pillow, same size. Come, somebody respond. Which one would you prefer me to hit you with, a pillow? Why a pillow? A pillow is soft. When it's soft, time increases. If time increases, what happens? Um, Tochuku, you want me to hit you with a wood? Okay, I'm not ready to go to jail. Okay. All right. Uh, so with a pillow, as time increases, what happens? Uh, pillow is soft. Time will increase. Force will what? Decrease. I'll give you another example. Okay. Thank you. Let's force of impact. I'll give you a simple, another example. I have a glass with me. Please listen. I have a glass with me, and the glass drops on the floor. Hard concrete floor. I have a second glass with me. It drops on the floor, but there is a cloth on the floor. Listen again. Two glass cups. One straight on the floor. The second one drops on the cloth that is on the floor. Ah, did you, did you get that scenario? Which one would break easily? Is it the one that drops on the direct floor or the one that drops on the cloth on the floor? Direct floor? Just I need about three responses here. 
the direct Sammy says the direct flow. Beautiful. Do you know why? On the direct flow, it spends a short time. But the ones that drop on the cloth, because the cloth is soft, it's going to sink in. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm glad we are on the same page. That F net and delta T are inversely proportional only if the change in momentum is the same. Rory Sang, what is your question? Applications. Arrest your beds. So, so, you, so you would say that the cloth reduces the time? Yes. No, that cloth increases the time, not reduces. Increases the time? Yes. Okay. Remember, it's soft, so it's going in. Ta, 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 ta. Okay. Yes. Sir. All right. Guys, if you have traveled, if you have, if you have gone on the highways, you must have seen this before. Some of you uh there's a symbol oh i forgot to get a picture of the symbol but these are called arrest of beds you can google it arrest of beds you find it on highway a lot of a lot of this on highways now the arrest of bed is very rough it's on the sideway sideway of highways sideway of highways i want to show you physics now in real life it's rough because it's made with gravel and it's long this is what happens when trucks are driving on these highways and they have brake failures and whatnot and whatnot what they do is they drive on arresto beds this part you see once you see this on the ground uh this part that's the symbol for the arresto bed that's how you get in this is gravel so what happens is a truck then drives on this because it's rough they are going to spend a lot of time trying to go through this there's a lot of friction grid 11 there's a lot of friction and that friction reduces the force of the car which allows the car to stop okay uh if they are opposite sides geometry and denominator of the line they are inversely proportional or they are going to confuse me as time okay uh, Pauline, I don't want us to simplify physics in such a way that you would now start getting confused. Okay, um, I'll, I'll I'll find you. I'll find you just now. I'll find you, guys. Applications. You would see this in questions. Number one, application arrest of beds. So please let's write applications arrest of beds. F net. So we are looking at F net is inversely proportional to time. Arrest of beds. Look at this diagram. This is your car. There are three things that are. Ooh, I've got a mic here making noise. Yeah, and they are disturbing this child from learning. All right, guys, I've got three examples here. I've got three things here crumble zone, airbag, and seat belts these are all thank you lumka these are all safety devices of a car and they are all using the same principle and what principle are they all using fnet is inversely proportional all of these three will increase your time Okay, Ayanda, I'll go back. Let me finish this slide. All these three things. So, number one, arrest of beds. Number two, please write it down, crumble zone. Number three, airbags. Number four, seat belts. You know, I, before I started driving, um, well, um, before I started driving, getting into Texas, You'd find taxis with seat belts at the back, at their back. They don't really put it on. They put it on when the metro is right in front. And I just laugh that these people think that seat belts are for metros. No, seat belt and for metros. Seat belt is for your life. It's not for metro. And some of you guys, some of you guys also do that. 
you only put the seat belt no guys once you get into the car put on the seat belt now quickly let's look at this three how please listen because there's nothing to write here the main thing to write is f net is inversely proportional to time with the same change in momentum all right number number one um arrestor beds number two crumble zone this is our number two this is our number three and that's our number four all of this will increase time what is the crumble zone you can see this is also crumble zone for oppressing heat from the back why why is this important in a car it takes this thing will reduce the time will increase the time rather because it takes time to for it to crumble that's why it called crumble zone it takes time for it to what um to get to you it delays the car from getting into you and as long as time is increasing what's happening force is decreasing whatever increases time decreases force so you can see cars that have a longer front are safer than cars that have um you know like your what car, i'm trying to think of a car now without um if you guys know a vw beetle car no apollo apollo has a front come on what polo are you driving a vw polo okay maybe it depends on the model but a uh, quantum sir yeah a quantum lovely a quantum thank you a quantum has no crumble zone quantum no crumbles or nicks all right because you are right in front do you understand the crumble zone now a truck has a better crumble zone a picanto a picanto has a small crumble zone okay and that's why cars are always rated with all of these to say what are the safety i'm glad you guys are seeing the um implication of this now all right so the longer the front and the back the boot zone the better the safer the car okay uh every not quit i'm trying to remember what the not quit looks like <laughs> i'll have to check again i know it's a small car but it does have a small crumble zone in front now with the engine and all of those blah 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 okay we're good so you see that crumble zone that crumble zone okay a toyota run x it does have it does have okay all right but you see so as long as guys when you get out now and you see cars just start thinking about oh the crumble zones the crumble zones so as a physics person don't buy a car for fashion buy a car for safety okay so when you go you talk to the person mm, i don't like this crumble zone speak some physics language there okay all right okay um so Kilo is helping everybody she says sack seat belt arrest of bed uh crumble zones lovely lovely okay now airbags guys definitely your airbag serves as your pillow all right hash bags are not safe um because there's no crumble hash bag which one is hash bag hash bag car. oh yeah okay okay but sedan cars okay thank you sir yeah i i, I now yes sedan cars have a, a safer because they have a bigger bag a longer bag which is a better crumble zone i'm glad we are seeing guys just google the cars if it has a long front and a long back those are called crumble what crumble zones of the car it takes time for it to squeeze that's what we're saying all right yes that's basically what we're saying lethabo that cars with crumble zones have a bit of a safer um it's, it's they are rated safer than cars without crumble zone this is why mercedes-benz is rated as one of the safest cars go and check a mercedes-benz the nose is very long just check it please go and check a mercedes-benz i'm not a fan of mercedes-benz um a bm and an audi fan all right but go and check a mercedes-benz it's quite long it's rated one of the safest cars all right and now you have your SUVs. Okay, let's move on from there. Airbags, guys. Mini, Airbags. Mini. 
Yes. Mimi, sorry, before you, you continue, I see Lembu or Grace keeps on raising his or her hand. So uh, maybe who's, who's that? Or she wants to say something. Who's that? Let me see. Grace or Grace there. No, this hand has been up. Grace, is it a mistake? Because I think I asked earlier on, Lembu Grace. Is that a mistake or a question? So I do have a question. Okay, all right. I'm going to lower your hand now so I will know the next time that you're raising afresh. What's your question, Grace? So you were explaining something about a falling glass on a direct floor and on a soft material. Yes. And I wanted to know if it was related to yesterday's lesson because I wasn't present yesterday. No, it's today's lesson. Okay, thank you. And what we're saying is, the if I put a cloth on the floor, right? Are you there with me? Yes. Okay. So you have two glass cups. One drops on the floor, bare floor, and the one drops on a cloth on the floor. Which one would break easily? The one that falls on the direct floor. Do you know why? Uh, not exactly. The time of contact is very small which increases oh. the force on the glass. Okay. But the one that drops on the cloth, the cloth softens it up, right? Meaning it increases time and therefore force decreases. Okay. So okay. Whatever, whatever increases time will decrease force. And all of these things here, all of these mechanisms are just what? All of these things will what? Increase what? time why are we trying to increase time we are trying to what increase the increase the force and that is for our safety so crumble zone the longer the crumble zone the longer the time if you have airbags an airbag is like a pillow all right a pillow yeah. will do what increase the time of contact therefore decreasing the force of impact what will a seat belt do a seat belt will also what increase time and what happens to force decrease what all right guys are we okay all right guys are we all okay with these applications we need to move on i know we're all enjoying the, my examples uh sikulile hand up sitle ah sitle Sitle. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Sitle, Sitle. You only came into class now. Sorry, sir. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Sorry, sir. Okay. Uh, Vlungile, Dipelelo Precious, where are you lost? Don't worry, Sitle, I know her. Uh, Dipelelo, where are you lost? I need us to move quickly to conservation of momentum. Um, we are simply saying whatever. Oh, thank you for emphasizing that, right? Okay, I was actually going to increase, uh, emphasize that as well. Guys, all of these things are meant to keep us safe. And the only thing that keeps you safe is if time increases if time does what increases but change in momentum must be the same. please go back and this is how you and this is three marks in the exam for the same change in momentum ta the net force is inversely proportional to time ta and then you put your conclusion whatever the question is in the exam please you must mention for the same change in momentum because i'm going to go ahead and explain a bit further now sir could you please briefly explain yesterday's lesson oh my god um grace yesterday's lesson is posted please go and um go through yes it's there on youtube Please go through. I'm sure you are on the group. Because yesterday, we spent like two hours yesterday trying to sort a few things out. And I need us to get to some content, lovely content today. Thank you, Grace. You are on the, if you're on the group, 
I would reshare the link after the session. All right, guys. Uh, so will they ask us in the exam examples? Yes, yes. Lumka, they will ask you in the exam, depending on the examiner and the question. But you'll see when we start looking at questions. And guys, the reason I'm doing all of this is so that when we look at questions, we're not teaching. We're just answering now. Pa, 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 pa. Okay. All right. Um, good. I love this question. So Bentley says, sir, can you explain for the same change in my thank you that's a beautiful question can you explain what we mean by for the same change can we move everybody let's move to that question now let's move on now for the same change in momentum okay ta lovely ta you know my cars guys you know my cars okay Let's drive a BM now, a Mercedes. Since somebody said Mercedes is the way. Okay. Um, a good crumble zone. Uh, my, the front looks like the back. So let's make this longer. Beautiful, executive. And it has that, uh, you guys, you know. Okay, there we go. Uh, Tepelelo, you'll catch up just now. Don't worry. I'll make sure you catch up. Okay, guys, don't laugh at my car, please. If it's not safe enough for you, uh, don't go in. But right now, the crazy fitness car, I think it's safe. Everyone is in it right now. So we're good. Okay. We are all in it safe. Longer crumble zones and whatnot and whatnot. So we're good. Now, for the same change in momentum, let's see. The mass of this car is 1,500 kg. Is that okay? This car is moving at an initial velocity of 40 meters per second. And all of a sudden, we get to, um, we have a robot here. We have a robot here. Okay. And it is red. Which means... This car, by the time it gets here, would have a zero meters per second. Obviously, now, guys, we know we can calculate what change in momentum, right? But we're going to create two scenarios, number one and number two. The first guy driving the same car stops, time to stop. Took this guy 15 seconds. So this guy saw it afar and slows down. Initial velocity of 40, final velocity of zero. Person number two, time to stop was five seconds. All right. I hope you get the scenario, guys. Guys, do we agree that these two cars have the same momentum? Yes or no? Because when it comes to change in momentum, guys, we're not talking about time here. Great. So what is our change in momentum? Change in momentum is M V F minus V I. What is our M? 1500 final velocity uh, will be what? Zero minus 40. Okay. And we know what the answer would be. be. It's a negative answer. Uh, 4 times uh, 15 will be what? 60, and we have 1, 2, 3, which is what? 60, 1, 2, 3 kilogram meters per second in the opposite direction. We did that yesterday. Beautiful. But now, let us calculate the net force acting on the first object. F net equals to change in momentum over change in time. For object number one, what's our F net going to be? All right, it's negative 60,000 over, and I'm going to explain the negative, over 15. F net for the second one, negative 60,000 over, over what? Over five. What's our answer here? This is going to be 
negative, um, is it 4,000? Yes. While this one will be what? Negative, uh, what? 12,000. I hope I'm right with my maths there. I hope I'm doing the maths right. Okay, good. And now, what does this mean? It means this is 4,000 newtons in the opposite what? Direction. And this is 12,000 newtons in the what? Um, opposite direction. Let's quickly explain what this, all of this calculation is all about. I hope you're making sense with my calculation, guys. The force it took for driver one to stop was 4,000. The force it took for driver two to stop is 12,000. All right? Are we making sense? Is it making sense to you guys? The change in momentum is the same, but look at the time. Look at the time. Why opposite directions? We are getting negative. Forward direction is positive. Do you notice our answer is negative? It's negative there. We did that yesterday. Force is a vector quantity. For this car to stop, there must be a force acting in the opposite direction, guys. That's why we have your negative. The car is moving to the right. For the car to stop, the force that stops the car must be moving to the left. Ayanda, does that make sense? That's where the negative comes from. So do you see for the same change in momentum, our change in momentum is 60,000. The net force of the one with a longer time, 15 seconds, is 4,000. The one for five seconds is um, 12,000. Did it make sense now? Please talk to me, let me know. Um, with the change in momentum. Beautiful, great, we can move on. Awesome, any thumbs down quickly? Any thumbs down? Great. It um, makes sense. Yes, sir. Minya, um, sorry, I would like to draw your attention very quickly to a WhatsApp man. There's something I would like you to talk to uh, for time one and time two. So if you can kindly check your WhatsApp. Uh, okay, all right. We're talking about time here. Okay, let me do this. Seconds. All right. Thank you, sir. Guys, are we okay? Did that make sense now? For the same change in momentum, F net and time are inversely what? Proportional. The one with the 15 seconds, we got 4,000 newtons. All right? The one with the five seconds, we got what? 12,000 newtons in the opposite word direct. The smaller the time, the greater the force of impact. Good. We are almost there. We are almost there, guys. This is becoming so lovely. We're good now. Uh, who was the person that asked for that uh, change in momentum? Into Bentley, are you okay now? Did that make sense? And that actually threw more light. Um, Valencia, we're just doing maths now. Where are you lost? Like saying, <clears throat> you see where where you, you were explaining like the F net equals to delta P over delta T, like the, um, the um, calculations. Mm. I am lost. I'm just lost. There. Where? Mm -hmm. Um, where you're calculating 60,000 over 15 equals to 4,000 and the F equals to 6,000 over 5,000. Yeah, that, that part, I didn't understand it. Were you, were you in class yesterday? Yes, I was. Okay, were you in class this morning? Do you know this formula? Yes. Good. So, do you understand how we got change in momentum? Yes, I understand. This, you understand this? Yes. And what is the time taken? 15 seconds. Okay, put that in the calculator. What's your answer? Um, 4,000. Good, negative 4,000. And what are we looking for? We are looking for what? F net. Good, so that means the F net for driver one is 4,000 Newtons. Are you okay? 
Okay. In the, in the opposite what? Direction. direction. Why opposite direction? Somebody's asking me as well. Guys, don't forget, we spoke about this yesterday. Your signs are important when it comes to physics. Signs are, we cannot, we cannot overrule signs when it comes to physics. Okay? Are you still with me, Valencia? Yes, I am. So, you're okay with 4,000? Yeah. Okay, let's go to the second one, quickly. We are saying the same change in momentum because the mass is the same, initial velocity is the same, final velocity is the same. What is different? This guy now uses what? Five seconds. Good. F net is delta P over what? Delta T. T. Okay. Negative 60,000 over five. What's our answer? 12,000. Good. Negative, right? Yes. So it's 12,000 in the opposite what? Direction. Now, do you notice both cars had the same initial velocity? Yes. Both cars had Five. the same final velocity. What's up? Both cars have the same final velocity. Yes. Mm, that yes is not very convincing. <laughs> Both cars got to the robot and stopped. Yeah, they did. Yeah, so what's the final velocity? Um, it was zero. Good. Which so both cars started at 40 meters per second. Both cars ended with zero, and they have the same mass. But one car drove faster than the other one. Which one drove faster? Car number two. Are you with me? Yes, I am. Okay. Why faster? Because it took five seconds for the guy to stop. The smaller the force, uh, the smaller the time, the bigger the force. The force. You see here, what's happening? Time is what? Increasing. What about yeah. the force? The force is now what? It's decreasing. They are inversely proportional as long as our change in momentum is the same. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Are, are we okay? Yeah. All now right. I understand. Great, Thank great. You. Ayanda, we were only emphasizing. Oh, great. Thank you. Um, I, I didn't see your name there. Ayanda, we're only emphasizing our statement that says with the same change in momentum, F net and time are inversely what? Proportional. The longer the time of contact, the smaller the force of impact. And we are only using this calculation to show all of this, that anything that increases time will decrease force. And what are the things that will increase time? Real life applications. Your crumble zone will increase time of contact. The airbags, this pillow is very soft. It increases time. Your seat belt holds you, increases time. Arrest of beds on the road increases time. Anything that increases time will decrease force for the same change in momentum. So we were doing a calculation to actually compare forces as time changes. Are we okay now, Ayanda? That's what we're calculating because I was responding to someone's question. Great. All right, guys, I quickly now want to ask you a lovely question. Please, Ooh, I know we're taking extra time, but it's, it's important. I don't want us to jump into this thing. This is one part of your exam that is very cheap and you must get it right. Before we move into collisions, which I'm going to do, let's spend five minutes on this. Ah, uh, no, 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 no. Um, I have, uh, I have uh, a backy. Let me see if I can draw a backy. Okay, a backy. There we go. Oh, not so bad. Looks nice. 
Okay, just a cross section of a backy. Okay, just a cross section of a backy. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Okay, this backy is moving. Ta 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 ta. This way. And I have a little bird. All right. I have a little bird there flying. Okay, wait, before I go to a little bird, let, 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 let me, let, let's try something. Before I go to a little bird, I have a, a small car, a small car driving in the opposite direction. Okay, so these guys are going to collide. Is that okay? These guys are going to collide. Use law of physics. to explain which car will be more damaged. Now, I want to quickly, I'm not going to ask you to answer this. I'm going to answer it for you. Okay. Then I'll, I'll ask you to answer that of the bird. All right. <laughs> Um, Tokelo. Okay, you're talking with Belina. I'm going to leave your conversations. All right, guys. Please, I just quickly want to deal with this thing because I want to bring in another law of physics here. So, we have this guy's moving. Okay, let's put this guy on the road. Otherwise, it's flying in the air. Now, this guy's collided. Definitely. Which car do you think will be more injured? Stop laughing, guys, at my diagrams. Quickly, which, is it A or B? Which one will be more injured, A or B? There's a law of physics I want to quickly bring in here. A or B, which one will be more damaged? Uh, yes, we're going there. But guys, uh, da, 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 da. all right. Okay, now I'm going to assist you in answering this question. Rory Sang, you want this up? I saw a lot of A and Bs. Okay. Yes, Rory Sang, talk to me quickly before I answer. So I wanted to ask, isn't like the amount of damage influenced by the size of the car and the speed of the car? Yes, absolutely. Um, but I, let me show you where let me show you where I'm going. Okay, okay. let me show you where I'm going. Um, okay, let, let me do this to make it easy for you guys to respond. This guy is moving at 40 meters per second. And this guy is also moving at 40 meters per second. When they collide, ta ta ta, they both stop and they go to zero meters per second just to bring physics in. One person is more likely to be injured or one car is more likely to be damaged than the other. And I want to quickly bring this in. And very good points that you raised there. Okay. Now, this is how we're going to answer it when it comes to physics. We are going to bring in the issue of inertia as well. All right? And if you remember what inertia is, the um, ability of a car to resist what? Change. Okay. Now, using laws of physics to explain which car will be more damaged. Number one. Please, let's get this. Number one, I'm going to make a list of things because I want you to understand. The force and time of A on B and vice versa, like we explained earlier on, and vice versa, that is opposite, is the same. This is according to what? Newton's what? Third law and our knowledge of impulse. I hope that makes sense. The force that object A exerts on object B is the same as the force object B exerts on object A 
And the time of collision is also the same. Guys, I need to move quickly from this and move to collisions. Okay, so let's just get this once. However, which car will experience a greater change in... Mom, ah, okay, no, this one, my zero is actually not good. Don't let me put a zero. Okay. The smaller object, the smaller object experiences a greater change in momentum Please, I want you to listen carefully. I want you to listen. I'm correcting that zero that I put there. These guys are moving at both 40 and 40, all right? Definitely, the mass of A is greater than the mass of B. That we know. You don't need any prophecy about that. The mass of A is greater than mass of B, okay? Mass of A is greater than mass of B. The final velocity of um, A will definitely be different as at the time of collision at the end they, they may both stop but follow me when the boat collide all right um b will feel more impact and that's what i'm trying to explain the smaller object experiences a greater uh experiences a greater change in momentum because i'm putting it in bracket because of a greater change in velocity. I'm sure some of us have experienced or you've seen some um, accidents on the road and you'd find one car far from where the accident happened and the truck is just still standing or the bigger car, most likely standing a little, you know, just where the accident happened. Why? the smaller car has a smaller mass which affects its change in velocity so this smaller car experiences a greater change in momentum please i want you to listen to me their impulse yes f net times delta t f net times delta t are the same but because the smaller car has a lesser mass the change in momentum will be greater hence the smaller car will experience more damage so the smaller object experiences a greater change in momentum because of a greater change in velocity okay greater change in velocity uh what's happening greater change in velocity i want to add something there and smaller mass and smaller what? Mass. And this we talk about what? Inertia. The smaller object experiences a greater change in momentum. Hence, the smaller car will be more damaged guys we are now bringing in the issue of inertia examiners are going to test you on this and when we test you on this guys please don't answer like you are answering lo use physics language the and now i've used physics language the smaller object experiences a greater change in momentum that's a physics language there because of a greater change in velocity and a smaller mass and i'm using the word inertia inertia you should understand that the bigger the object the bigger the inertia the resistance to change all right hence the smaller car will be more damaged although they have the same impulse we've done impulse f net times delta t f net times delta t object a exerts a force on object b Object B will also exert the same force, but in opposite what? Direction. But because B is smaller, there's a big difference in the change in velocity of B. The final velocity of B 
will way be different from the initial velocity of A, which puts A, uh, B at risk. So imagine you, you have a smaller car and a bigger truck um, hitting each other. The smaller car will feel more impact because of the difference in the velocities. So you would see the smaller car would move from maybe 40 to zero, while this one will move from 40 to maybe 20. So who experiences a bigger change in momentum? The smaller car and the smaller car will be easily damaged. The smaller car will be easily damaged. All right. Okay. I see some of you are engaging, which is good. Guys, my remaining 30 minutes, I want to look at the last part of momentum. Please just put down this note. When we look at questions, I'll guide you on how to answer questions, please. Very important. You don't just answer. This is not LO physics. This is physics. Okay. This is not LO. So don't write so many stories. We use physics to answer physics. You bring in formulas, you bring in, okay, you bring in formulas, you bring in relationships for the same change in momentum, F net and delta T, things like that. And that's how we answer physics. Quickly, all right, not much questions to be tested on this one. So I don't want to waste so much time on this, but definitely we're going to come across questions and we would come back to this page and you would see how I'm going to train you on how to answer this. Quickly, the last part, collisions. Collisions. Let's start from defining quickly. Let, let's run now. An isolated system. Now we have an idea, so it's going to be quite easy. Isolated system. Um, a system where the net external force, net external force is zero. Another word for isolated is called a closed system. So we are saying there are no external forces. I want to move quickly, so please write very fast. Uh, those of you that were with me, um, when we did maths last in December, you would understand what this E mean, right? Is equal to zero. This means sum. We did number patterns, four lessons. An isolated system, a system where the net external force, net external force is zero. Um, okay, it's already, I'm actually streaming live. There are people on YouTube right now because I didn't want to, I didn't want the distractions. So it's already, already on YouTube. Okay, now we are going to then state, this is number one, our second definition or law would be the law of conservation. Please follow me quickly. Law of conservation of momentum. Then we'll just answer lots of questions after we are done with this explanation. In physics, every time you see the word conservation, please remember that there must be an isolated system. Don't forget. In physics, once you see conservation, things are only conserved in isolated system. So here, we're going to state a very standard law. In an isolated system, the total linear momentum I should put the word linear here, is conserved. And we are done. That's two marks, guys. We don't want to waste too much time on, on these definitions. There are two definitions that I've given you right now. All right? There are two definitions that we have been given right now. A system where the net external force is zero. And the law of conservation of linear momentum states that in an isolated system the total linear momentum is conserved guys 
if I go through any question papers, you would see this will be tested. This would be what? Tested. So please, this is what you should know. All right. Um, I'm seeing somebody asking the question here. Sir, so what is a system? All right. Um, okay, you'd not be tested, but I'll quickly give you the definition of a system. All right. Uh, okay, I'm seeing a message now. I'll come back to that. A set of things working together as part of a mechanism. All right. That is a system. A system is a set of things working together as part of a mechanism. All right. That is what a system is. Okay. There's a message I got right now from an internal moderator. All right. Thank you, sir. Um, okay. We assist them in terms of getting, all right. Um, we should use the word isolated. Okay. Isolated in physics, closed in chemistry. Okay. Isolated. So let's stick to the word isolated. In an isolated system, the total linear momentum is conserved. Please, very, very important that you get those definitions correct. Somebody was saying yesterday, do you have to write it the way it is? And I responded, yes. I don't know who asked that question. Okay, let's move on quickly. Now, guys, the fact that I have said total means I need to add. Please, before we get into calculations, I want to create a whole lot of scenarios for you. Now, if I say in an isolated system, this is what we're saying in terms of formula. In an isolated system, we are saying the total initial momentum, please watch this, total initial momentum would be equal to the total final momentum. That's what we just discussed now in words. Now we're trying to write it in formula. Please follow through quickly. Total initial, total, we can do that. Initial momentum. And again, you would see it can be said, total momentum before collision. Before means initial should be equal to the total momentum after collision. Total momentum before collision. Please follow. This is the climax of the topic now. Total momentum. It's a law. And this law happens in an isolated system. What is an isolated system? A system that has no external forces. The net external force is equal to zero. So the total linear momentum is conserved. Total momentum before is equal to total momentum after. Guys, I am going to create quickly three scenarios. Please follow. Three good scenarios, which are the things you and I should expect. We're going to create our, you see, I didn't write any formula yet. I didn't write any formula yet, but the main formula will be to add up the momentums before. So here it's going to be sum of individual momentums sum of individual momentum before collision let me add the word explosion i said sum of individual right and here sum of what individual momentum after collision or 
explosion. Now, let's go look at our first scenario. I'm going to write scenario one, scenario two, and scenario three. Scenario one, scenario two, and scenario three. What are external forces? All right, forces outside the system. Example, friction. Ayabonga. Forces outside a system. And one common example is simply friction. Okay. Guys, now, please, I want you to watch what I'm going to do. C three scenarios, right? So I want to do everything on the, on the same page. Three different scenarios. I think after this, we can look at one or two questions. Object A and Object B. Object A, Object B, Object A, Object B. Okay, my diagrams, uh, my the sizes may be, okay, I can't actually get the same. I'll try. Okay. Object A and Object B there. Lovely. I have it here again. Object A and Object B. Lovely. Object A and Object B. Okay. Just before you start writing, guys, I'll give you time to write because I want to do everything. So I we create these formulas together. We create these formulas together. Okay, I'm having a mic making noise. Ooh. Everybody. Okay. Guys, it's important to have gone through everything we went through to get to this point. All right. Scenario one, two, and three. You would notice, okay, here we're going to talk about initial, and here we'll talk about final. Now, if I ask you to calculate the momentum of the objects here, M1, V, I, 1, I hope that makes sense. We spoke about momentum. Mm, I don't know if anybody, any, anyone remembers the definition of momentum. Remember what I told you, momentum, M-O-N. Start by defining momentum when you look at your mom. Mom is a product of mass and what? Velocity. So if I look at object one before collision, what is the momentum? It's the product of its mass, thank you, Tachuku, and the velocity. We have identified this as one. So what's the momentum? M1 times its initial velocity, VI1. Guys, can I quickly ask you, please, can I quickly ask you, are you okay with my notation? M1 and VI1 before I move forward. Lungile, hands up. Are you okay with my M1 VI1? M1 stands for the mass of one. VI is the initial velocity of object one. Okay, thank you. Can somebody please type for me what will be the initial momentum of object two? initial momentum i want to see if you are following momentum initial momentum of object two initial momentum of object two oh great you guys are you guys are super uh to, um kotato it cannot be m1 it has to be m2 so this is m2 v i2 great thank you okay Let's stop there. Can somebody quickly type for me the, fi the final momentum of object one? Final momentum of object one. What from our notations right now? Ah, you guys are the best. You guys are, mm, 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 this, I see so many distinctions already. Great. So this one is going to be M1 VF. It means you understand the notations now. What would this be? M2, Vf2. Okay, let's create our formula. According to the law, we said in an isolated system, 
the total linear momentum must be conserved. The word conserved means must remain the same. Mm. And we said, let me go back to my point here. The sum of individual momentum before collision must be equal to the sum after. Oh, so what that simple. Sum before will therefore be M1 VI1 plus M2 VI2. I have added the initial. But we are saying if this system is conserved, then it must be equal to what? M1 VF1 plus M2 VF2. Does that make sense? Please talk to me. Initial momentum of object one, PI1 plus the final uh, no, initial momentum of object two should be equal to the final momentum of object one and final momentum of object two. Please talk to me. If you get that, then we are done with this page. The total before must be equal to the total after. I'm just waiting to see a thumbs down. Uh, Tokelo. Okay, Tokelo. It's, this is not maths. Okay. Let me write what you wrote, but I, 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 I like what you just did. She, um, you said M1 VI and put a bracket. No, just remove the brackets. Okay, this is simplified. This is not nice to say one is common. These are notations. Okay. Are you with me there? They are notations. Don't say, okay, one is common. Let's bring out one. Uh uh. Okay, awesome. Guys, now do you notice? Please check. What is the condition for my formula? They were separate before and they were separate after. Look at the object, guys. Look at the object. One and two, they were separate before collision. One and two, they were separate after. You might be lost with what I just said. Look at number two. What do you notice? Do you notice these things are together? This is separate. And here, they move together as a unit. I want you to see the difference between one and two. Look, a quick example. If you take your calculator, your calculator has two parts. If you slide the calculator into its cover, it becomes one object. That's an example of a collision. All right. Although that one, we're not going to count that one because it's not isolated. You are involved. All right. You are involved in that. But is it making sense to you guys that the first one, they were both separate, separate before and separate after. The second one, separate before and together. If they are together, it means that they have the same final velocity. Talk to me. If you have ever seen where a car is being towed with a, a rod, not a rope, both cars will be moving at the same velocity. Both cars will be moving. If the cars are together, it's like you in a car. You cannot move faster than the car and you cannot move slower than the car. Now, let's create a formula here. The total before would still be what? M1 VI1 plus M2 VI2. And that should be equal to, what is my final now? M1 VF plus M2 VF. Do you notice I am not saying VF1 and VF2. VF1 and VF2 are the same. VF1 and VF2 are the same because the objects are moving in, uh, they are moving together. So they have the same what? Velocity. Did that make sense? This one, I can be mathematical about it. All right. And say M1 plus M2, because they have a final velocity that is common, and put a VF there. Did that make sense? Uh, 
I'll finish now. Okay. Guys, is it making sense to you? Please let me know. Let me know. Any thumbs down on my formulas? And guys, this formula is not given on the formula page. The only thing they, are, they give you is momentum, P equals to MV. Um, Kotato, you wrote it wrongly. You wrote M1 plus M2 VF. That is wrong. You wrote M1 plus M2. Ah, where you put your bracket is wrong. It's supposed to be M1 plus M2 all in bracket multiplied by VF. Thank you, Rizana. Kotato, did you notice that error? Okay. Now, what about the third one? The third one is an explosion. They are together as a unit. And what... Oh, this one should be separate. Here, they are separate. If they are together as a unit, what does it mean? They have the same initial what? Velocity. So what can we say? M1, uh, let's start by saying M1 plus VI. I didn't say one or two because VI is the same. Plus M2, VI, the same initial velocity. M1, VF1, now they are different velocities because the objects are separate. Every time they are separate, I separate my formulas. Now because they are together, I can add M1 plus M2 VI because they have a common initial velocity will be equal to M1. These are just uh, creations from that law that says the total linear momentum is conserved. Guys, um, on my formula, I'm done with this formula. We're going to calculations now. Are you okay? Let's see. Is there anybody giving me a thumbs down? You are lost with what we are saying. We're just using the law and we are adapting to different situations. Objects are separate before, separate after. Separate before, together after. Together after, uh, together before, and separate after. This one here is actually called an explosion. So remember the law. In an isolated system, the total linear momentum is conserved. My dear learners, let's see if we can do one question. Ah, but I know. Let me let me come here. Let's see. From what you have learned today, I want to try something. From what you have learned today, please don't guess. I'm begging you. Don't guess. From what you have learned today, do you think you can answer this question? I'll give you two minutes or, yeah, I want to see something. Without me saying anything, without anybody helping you, do you think you can answer this? The answer, we've done it. Read carefully. It's in your note. Answer this question for me. Uh, I under no, I didn't say they have the same velocity. I didn't. So every time they collide, they will have the same velocity? No, no. They only have the same velocity if they move together as a unit. Okay, as a unit. Please try this. I want you to apply. Am I, have I been following? It's not complex. Read. That's why I gave you two minutes. Let me start my timing again. Guys, I want you to read. I want you to see something. I want to move you from grade 11. Quickly. Some of you still have the mind of grade 11. Read this. Check your notes. Try to remember everything I said. The answer is already there.
I need more answers. These answers are just still the number of people that responded to this question. Guys, you give it a trial first. Okay. All right. Guys, I'm glad you guys, some of you got it right. A lot of people actually got it right. Let us perform an experiment using identical trolleys. Each of the mass M, each of mass M, right? The trolleys are arranged as shown below. Okay, in the diagram below. They are initially at rest. Okay? It means the total momentum before. Check. The total momentum before. The objects were at rest. If they are at rest, the total momentum before is zero. So please make sure we read. The total momentum before is zero. All right? They are at rest on a frictionless surface. This is emphasizing isolated system. And are connected with a compressed massless string. When the, the reason for massless string is we don't want to add mass to this system. When the spring is released, it falls vertically down and the single trolley moves with a momentum of P to the left. I want to show you the calculation. Here, you really do not need a calculation. The examiner is just trying to play along with you. But we know that, remember, total initial momentum must be equal to the total final momentum, right? This object were together. So we said M1 plus M2 because they are attached and they have the same initial velocity. Is that fine? Will be equal to the final velocity. Watch this. The final velocity of object one, uh, final. Final momentum of object one plus the final, I hope that makes sense. Sum means we add the momentum of both of them. But since the object was stationary, the whole thing here is zero. We are now told that when the spring is released, the momentum of the single, which is our M1 basically, all right, the mag um, is P to the left. Okay, P, let's choose right as positive. P to the left. This becomes negative P plus PF2. If we move this over, what do we have? P. Oh, so the final momentum of the second object is P. Did that make sense? I want you to, guys, please appreciate multiple choice. Did that make sense? Please let me know. We have 10 seconds. Is there anyone who is lost? Give me a thumbs down. This is just using the law. Rizana, talk to me. Unmute yourself quickly. Rizana, talk to me. Rizana says, um, there's a lost hand there. Sir, could you explain? Tell me what Zero you understand. Two, tell, tell me. PS2. Tell me what you understood. Okay, I've got Aya Bonga as well. Tell me what you so, understood with what I did. I understood the first part where you said that the sum of P initial is equals to the sum of P final and the fact that the total momentum before is zero. That okay. I understood. Okay. And then I yeah. understood that. You understood they this? No. The first part... What, this part one. number one, two, and three, before the zero, that's where I got lost. The zero part is where I got lost. Wait. Learners perform an ex They are arranged. The trolleys are arranged as shown, okay? They are initially at? Rest, yes. That one I understood, sir. Okay. So if they are initially at rest, what is the initial velocity there? Meaning it's zero. Okay, initial velocity is zero. So, 
I see a lot of people also saying I should re-explain. So guys, M1 plus M2 plus VI. What is our VI? Zero. So zero times the mass? Is zero. Okay. I'm sure everybody's okay with that zero now. Right? Are we okay? Rizana? Yes, sir. Okay. Do you understand this part? Yes, sir. So there are uh, there are two objects, right? Remember. And this time around, okay, let's go to something. They were together before. Yes, sir. Part? Remember? They were together before. And what are they now? Separate after. Because we are told that this one moves to the left. Is that okay? And this yes. one moves where? To the right. That's why we came here and separated them. Final momentum of object one plus the final momentum of object what? Two. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Huh? Yes, sir. Okay. Now look at the next statement. When the spring, and we are told this is equal to what? Zero. We're yeah. good? When the spring is released, it falls vertically down, and the single trolley, which we took as object one, moves with a momentum of what? Oh, okay. Yes, sir. P. P to in, the which, left. in which direction? To the left. We chose right as? Positive. Okay, so left should be what? Negative. So zero equals to what? Negative P. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Plus, we don't know the final momentum of the second object. Oh, okay. Now, the examiner is saying, the magnitude of the momentum of the two trolleys, which is our M2, what will it be? We do simple maths now. Transpose. Thank you very much. And it's easier for me to just move that one. Yes, sir. Or if you want to do real math again, you can move this one. It becomes what? Negative P F2. Remember it's small letter. Negative P F2 equals to what? Negative what? P. P. Or automatically, you know the negatives will divide each other, right? Yes, sir. So what do we have? The momentum, the final momentum of the second object of object two. What's your answer? P. Answer is now P. Uh, Lebo, uh, Lebo, check your phone. It, I think we are fine here. Guys, can you see my screen? Lebo says she cannot see my screen. Guys, can you yes. see my screen? Let's quickly help. All right, so it's fine on my side. Lebo, please check your side. I don't know what happened. Everyone can see my screen. Okay. Lebo, please check. Make sure you choose the right crazy physics. Um, Ayabonga, are you fine now? Cutney, are you okay now? There were a few people that said I should explain again. Are you okay now? Lumka, are we okay now? Sam Kelo, are we okay? Abigail, you chose A. Are we okay now? Bongani, you chose A. Taiba, are you okay now with my explanation? Allen, are you okay? You also chose A. Uh, quite a number of you chose A. Allen, you chose C, all right? But, okay, a lot of people, there are a lot of A's and B's here. But guys, are we okay now? Uh, let me see. Lumka, explain the drawing like what? Okay, Lumka, are you fine now though? Okay, great. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Guys, multiple choice. I want to, don't run away. Don't run away. We want to get marks in our multiple. Choice. Oh, let's see this question. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Guys, I'll do one question today. Give you some, there's one more concept we are going to deal with, but I don't want to rush you. Okay. So we start with this one today. This is our first question. Our first real exam question. Uh, let me do this. Guys, do you notice that here you must get two marks? 
There's no one, no one must say any story here, but let's read first. The diagram below show two skateboards, A and B, initially at rest. Please, guys, don't, I know, can I tell you how you guys read? You guys, you go and start from 4.1, and then you are just reading blah, 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 blah. Uh, there are no numbers here. Ah, so let's move on. No, please, let's stop doing all of those things. Read, underline. Um, so, Kelo, this is a 2018 paper. I'm not, I don't remember, but check February 2018, I think. The skateboards are in a straight line. Guys, I want you to see that everything we've spoken about is now reiterated in this question. I'll start. It says the diagram shows two skateboards initially at rest, right? The skateboards are in a straight line, linear momentum one in front of the other and a short distance apart the surface is flat frictionless what are we talking about isolated uh Lebo, you need to scroll down and find crazy physics okay yes or you log out and quickly log in log out and quickly log in okay guys i'm sure number 4.1 is very easy for everyone what do we state? In an isolated what? System, the total linear momentum, just keep it as simple as, as this, is conserved. How many marks? Two marks. From here, you go straight to varsity. You are done with high school. Is that okay? You, you're done. Two marks straight. You are now in UJ. Get it correct. Don't add funny words. Don't remove words. Just get it done like this. Get it done as simple as, as that. You guys are laughing. No, straight. You get it like this, you move straight to UJ. Tell them you can now define. Um, you are not on it. Okay, Grace. Uh, before we leave, I would share the group link in case you are not on the group link. Ooh, I have a million messages on WhatsApp right now. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, let me just do that now. Ooh, we have 740 something learners. This is good, guys. This is good. This is good. This is where you are going to get help on the WhatsApp group. Belina, not UJ. Okay, all right, fine. But just get into a very good university, UJ, Vert, wherever. But be able to give me a correct definition. So we're good. Two marks. Now, let's go for our next question. Guys, I want us to clean up all the marks under this topic. Like, clean, clean, clean. So what will happen is, after today, we'll have work to do. Okay. And you'll be doing that tomorrow. I will see you again on Monday in an open session again where we finish a bit of um, some other work. All right, check this. Each skateboard has a mass of 3,5 kg. Let's look at what we're given. Each skateboard, learn to write things down. Mass is 3,5 kg. Mass is 3,5 kg. The cat of mass 2,6. Ooh, I don't know why physics people can't just stay alone. They must go and buy cats. Anyway, 2,6 kg, that's the mass of a cat. Must be a very heavy cat, eh? Jumps from, by the way, remember, these things were at rest, okay? These things were at rest. Um, okay, I got lost. All right. The cat of mass 2,6 jumps from skateboard A with a horizontal velocity of 3 meters per second and lands on skateboard B with the same velocity. All right. Follow the story, guys. Please follow the story. It was formerly on A. Is that okay? The cat jumps from A and jumped to B. 
Now let's see our question 4.2. What is this examiner looking for with cats? Calculate the velocity of skateboard A. Please, you got to read. Just after the cat had jumped from it. Please check where the question stopped. Calculate. I'm going to reduce the question now, page, so that I can just deal with this question alone. All right, quickly. I want to deal with this. So this is what we have. Five marks. Ooh, five marks. Let's see. What do we know about the cat? We, what are we looking for, by the way? We are looking for the velocity of skateboard A. Now, in this case, we've got nothing to do with B. Here is my skateboard. Here's my skateboard. Uh, my own cat is circular. Don't worry about the shape of the cat. Now, at the end, what do we have? We have a cat that has jumped away and I have a separate skateboard. Is that fine? Okay, let's call this object one. Let's call this object two. So my cat is one and the skateboard is two. What do we know, my dear enough? The question said they were stationary. Oh, velocity here is zero. But at the end, what happened? The cat jumped with a velocity of three meters per second. Final velocity of object one is three. The question says, calculate the velocity of skateboard A. Do we know the final velocity of object two? No. Remember, this is the cat and this is skateboard A. This is the cat and this is skateboard A. My dear learners, use the law of conservation quickly. You have two minutes. Use the law of conservation to quickly calculate VF2 for me. You have two minutes, not more than two minutes. Everything has been given. You already have the formulas. I give you all the formulas you need, all right? Give you all the formulas you need. All you are doing is pick the correct formula from the three scenarios that we spoke about. Substitute and get me an answer. Choose the direction of motion as positive. So please, that's important. Direction of motion. is positive motion of the cat let's choose that as positive quickly everybody i want us to see something nice i want us to explain something nice something nice might actually happen here something nice is good oh i see this question beautiful come 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 everybody write your formula substitute we know the masses, you know the mass of the cat, you know the mass of the trolley. Ah, Lebo, now you came back in and you didn't tell me you can now see. Come on, people, time up. Time up. Tochuku, what's your answer? Yes, we always round off to two decimal places, all at the end of your calculation. Two decimal places all the time. Uh, come on, guys, I need answers. Bontley, what's up? Your hand is up.
Bontley, Mayama. And is up. Any is there a question? Come on, guys. Guys, listen. If you are not getting any answer or you are stuck, please let me know and say lost or stuck. Please. I don't want anyone to keep quiet. I want an answer from everyone. I'm lost. I'm stuck. I don't know what to do. Good. Ariella, thank you. I need that. I need that. I need to know who is lost. Beautiful. Great. Lumka, please check your answer. Alan, all right, I'll find you just now. Okay, there's a the quite a number of people are lost, please. In the class. In a class, always take note. All right. If you don't understand what the teacher has done, please don't keep quiet. All right. Let, um, make sure you tell your teacher you're stuck, please. Very important. All right, let's quickly answer this together and I'll tell you what, uh, what's said. Uh, guys, we have teachers in our midst as well. So um, they keep sharing and I'll keep sharing the advices that we're getting along the way. This is a very good platform. Uh, let me see, Google, 2, 2, 3. All right, guys, let's see first. To, at the beginning, these objects were together. Is that fine? And at the end, they are separate. We did that scenario. The total linear momentum before should be equal to the total linear momentum after. That's all we're doing. The total linear momentum before. Okay? So, if we say the total linear before collision should be... We have two objects. All right, M1, but these objects are connected together. You can do that, initial velocity. Why am I adding the mass? Because the objects are together and they have the same velocity, right? But now they are separate. M1 final plus M2 VF2. Remember, let's put a note there, direction of cat. Direction of cat is positive this is very key very key now what is m1 okay wait m1 uh m1 we talk about the cat m2 we talk about what skateboard a just for us to be able to quickly see skateboard a what is m1 uh what is the mass of the cat again 2,6 and 3,5 all right 2,6 and what 3,5. Okay, so let's substitute. What is the mass of the cat? M1, 2,6. What is the mass of the cat? 3,5. What's the initial velocity? Zero. M1, what's the mass of the cat? 2,6. Now, what is the final velocity of the cat? The cat started from zero. It's now sitting on three. To the right. Okay. Direction of cat is positive. Three. Plus, what is M2? 3,5, and we don't know VF2. Please, let's do some nice math. On the left, 0. 2,6 times 3. 6 times 3 will give us 18, 6, and this is 7. Plus, aha, guys, I know where some of you are going to make mistake. Some people are going to add this together. Please don't. Don't forget that this is still math. They are not like terms. So what do we do? Can we transpose? Negative 3,5 VF2 equals to what? 7,8. What do we do? We divide. All right? And it's negative, please. That's why I said I'm going to tell you something because I want us to understand. Guys, when you do your calculations and you get a negative answer, you must be able to explain why you have a negative. What's our answer? All right. Uh, 2, 2, 8, 5, 7, 1, 4, 2, 9. All right. I just, I just got a message. 
is um i just got a message from sir guys if you don't know how to round off please write the whole thing as your capital has given you is that okay please we don't want anyone to lose marks physics is very easy physics is the new lo very easy very easy is that okay all right if you don't know how to round off write the whole thing okay my problem was that i didn't substitute the cat as m1 okay that's why you must be able to label correctly you can write m cat if you want so identify what you want to use as one two those one twos are just you know that you can use a and b you understand what i'm saying you can use m look we could have used somebody could have said the mass of the cat plus mass of trolley a if one and two would confuse you you are not restricted and bounded by that will be equal to the mass of the cat the final velocity of the cat plus the mass of trolley a final velocity of you can if they're just notations are we okay uh ayabunga is it fine now because ayabunga says is it necessary to take the mass of the cat as one no they're just notations. so i could have used mc ma all right you'll get used to this as we go on so what's our answer negative two comma two three oh guys i need someone to explain to me what i'm going to write next so this is two comma two three meters per second we said the direction of the cat is positive right so this is negative this is in the opposite direction of cat I have a question for you. Before I ask my question, thank you, Rosanna Bontley, uh, Valencia, your hands are up. I have a question. Okay, Bontley, your hand is up. Quickly. Bontley, because I want to ask a question. I want us to be on the same page as we move. Bones. It's fine. Okay, great. I'm going to put your hand down so that I get notified when you raise it up the next time. All right. Uh, Tapiwa, your hand is up. Okay, now. So, yes, Tapiwa. So, we, yesterday when you were doing momentum, so. Sorry? Yesterday when you yeah. did momentum. So, mm -hmm. we momentum as kg meters per second. So, yes. I just want to ask as why are we only using meters per second? What are we looking for now, Tapiwa? Aren't we looking for the, the momentum here, sir? Oh. Let me take you back. What are we looking for? Read the question. Calculate the velocity. So, what's the unit of velocity? Oh, it's V, sir. Meter per second. Meters per second, yes. So, are we okay now? Yeah, right, sir. Thank you, sir. Good. Guys, I have a problem with what we just did, and I need someone to help me. I need someone to explain. I've got a few teachers here as well. These teachers are confused like me, I believe, but we need someone to explain. Why is trolley A moving? What is responsible for trolley A to move in the opposite direction please i need a valid physics explanation they were both stationary the cat jumped off trolley a and from the calculation we did trolley a moved backwards why are we even correct with what we did quickly we have seven minutes before this class is over but i need someone to say okay yes we are correct and this is why we have a negative 30 seconds rory sang here's my question the trolley is here this object is here stationary but we now noticed that mm, when this thing moved this way this one came this way why opposite direction what is responsible please alan okay alan very fast alan gave me an answer let's see let's read i'm going to read through alan said newton's third law the cat applied a force on the skateboard a 
the skateboard experiences this force in the opposite direction. Okay, Alan, thank you. Tochuku, the force the cat exerted on the skateboard A when it jumped down, jumped towards skateboard B. Okay, Belina, Newton's third law or first law? Mm -hmm, the or. Lumka, sir, which VF are we calculating? VF1 or VF2? Does it really matter? It matters how you label. So we are looking for the final velocity of trolley A. And that's why I said my one is my cart and my two is trolley A. But we can use MCMA. Pulen, action rear, uh, guys, you guys are the best. Your answers are perfectly correct. These things exert a force on each other according to Newton's third law. So the trolley exerted a force on the cat and the Cat exerted a force in opposite direction. <gasps> Guys, physics is the best. Newton's third. Okay, we're not talking about time right now, Courtney. We're not talking about time right now. All right, we're only talking about action reaction pair. Okay, action. Thank you. So the force, the trolley exerted the force on the cat. And the cat exerted a force backwards now on the trolley. So the trolley moved back. Guys, this is why if I had done this question and didn't get my direction right, you must use your knowledge of physics to ask yourself, am I right or am I wrong? Beautiful. Well done. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Fakude. Guys, thank you. I, uh, you guys just blew my mind. Boom. Guys, I, oh my God, I hope I didn't lose. <gasps> oh yeah, I need this question. Guys, I hope it's okay so far. All right, now let's go get the last 4.3 done. 4.3, beautiful. So you saw how we substituted, right? You saw how we did our substitution. Please, if you are going to be confused with one and two, MC, MA, okay, very important. Otherwise, you'll be calculating what you're not supposed to be. Oops. Calculating what we're not supposed to be calculating. All right. Let's check something. Let's look at this one. Our final question for the day. I hope the session has been helpful to you. Guys, uh, it's quite slow because uh, we have so many people and we want to make sure everyone is on board. Let's check this. Immediately, and by the way, guys, please go back. Let me show you something. Look at this. Please read the question. The question said, calculate the velocity, which is a vector quantity. That's why my answer had this. If your answer doesn't have this, you'd lose one mark. Oh, by the way, how many marks is this question? Five. Let's mark. Let's mark. How would we mark this? Your formula would get one mark okay um one mark for your substitution on the left the zero okay um i think in this question uh let me see if i'm an examiner this is what i would have done i need to check how it is marked though but but everything on the right maybe this examiner sometimes it changes one mark i would have given this one, two, three, four, five. Because if Elena doesn't write that, then we're in trouble. But most likely, this is how they, they put this mark here for this substitution. And this mark for the entire thing with the direction. So we have five marks. Formula, substitution, answer with a unit. So please, read carefully before you jump away from that question. All right, let's quickly answer the last one, and I'll give you a few questions to do for me. We'll start from there in our next session. Immediately after the cat had landed, ha, ah, wait, we are now on trolley what? Trolley B. Boom. Our cat came from, let me use uh, this. Our cat came from here, and our cat is now here. Okay. The cat was moving at three meters per what? Second. Immediately after the cat landed, 
the cat and skateboard B move horizontally. This whole thing moved at 1,28 meters per second to the right. Guys, can you see that the examiner keeps putting direction? So you must always put direction. Uh, Tochuku, yes, it is Milton's third law. All right. Calculate. Aha, check. What are we looking for? Calculate the magnitude of the impulse on skateboard B as a result of the cat landing. We are looking for the magnitude of what? Impulse. Wait, the first thing that comes to your mind, my dear Lenas, please check, is what is impulse? Can we define? Product of net force, right? And time taken. Please, we need to keep checking. And this is what? F net. I'm finishing now. Sorry, I'm going to just take two, three minutes. I said 10 o'clock. It's 10 now. But my dear Lenas, do we have force in this question? No. Do we have time? No. And this examiner looks to be um, having some challenges. Why would they tell me to calculate impulse if the definition of impulse is F net times time and I don't have F and I don't have T? Can somebody tell me what we can do quickly? We are looking for impulse. But to get impulse, I need F net and I need time. And I don't know F net in time. Okay, Tochuku. On a little on the, ah, guys, you are the best. This was where we ended yesterday, and we started we started from there today. The magnitude of impulse is the same as the magnitude of the change in momentum. So where isn't the change in momentum? Ah, you guys are the best. You guys are the best. So can we find the change in momentum? What's the formula? M delta V. Now, please go back. What are we looking for? We are looking for the impulse on what? Skateboard B. Please, this is now very key. If I'm using that, I'll have to use the mass of B. Okay? Final velocity of B minus the initial velocity of B. Change in momentum, remember? Okay. All right. Do we know the mass of B, guys? Do we know the mass of B? Yes, the trolley, 3,5. Can somebody tell me the final velocity of trolley B? Quickly, we're finishing now, but I don't want to spawn feed you. What is the final velocity of trolley B? Uh, Tochuku, no. The question says on skateboard B, on B. Okay, that's what I'm emphasizing. If I'm dealing with B, I'm dealing with B alone. Everything has to do with B. But good question. Lovely. All right, thank you guys. 1,28, positive. Can somebody tell me the initial velocity of trolley B? I'm going to do something for you to, to, to help you see clearly again. Mass, uh, initial velocity of trolley B, zero. Please give me an answer here. Give me an answer here. Please give me an answer here. Uh, let's check our units. Let's check our units. I need you to give me answers with correct units. We're finishing now, guys. Answers with correct units. Answers with correct units. Four comma. Okay, you guys are giving me four comma four eight. All right. So let's answer the question now. Finally, so we are saying four comma four. Let me check. Uh, let me see if I'm if I can start trusting you. 
three comma five, one comma two eight, four comma four eight. Beautiful. Now, guys, this is change in momentum, right? This is this should have been kilogram meter per second, but that's not what we are looking for. We are then going to say impulse is what four comma four eight newton second please check your units we are not looking for change in momentum we are looking for impulse so your unit must be the unit of impulse we only use change in momentum to get this answer please did that make sense to you that that makes sense so if you leave your answer as kilogram meter per second you'll be wrong because you are calculating change in momentum that's why i told you yesterday they are not the same they are only equal in magnitude rory sang your end is up we're good guys did this make sense three simple marks there that unit is key so an examiner will have given you one mark for the formula one mark for the substitution and check answer with the correct unit i want to quickly round this up today by doing something guys please i want you to follow we have a cat and we have a trolley i want us to test something we have a cat and we have a trolley the two are exerting force on each other we said earlier on when we started the impulse of object a on b is the same as the impulse of B on A. I want to just show you something here. Um, please, I, I'm, I'm finishing now. I want to do something. This is the last screen, I promise you. Last screen. Uh, skateboard B. I'm just going to rewrite what we did just now because I want to compare. We said change in momentum is MVF, MBVF. Is that fine? And then we said this is what three comma five one comma two eight minus zero and we got four comma four eight and then we said our impulse is four comma four eight what newton what second let's try something what is the impulse on the cat what is the imp remember the cat and the trolley are in contact if object a exerts a force on object b Object B will simultaneously exert the force on object A, equal in magnitude and opposite in what direction? Let's see something. Mass of cat, final velocity of cat, initial velocity of cat. Let's let's try to prove something. What is the mass of the cat? Two comma six. What is the final velocity of the cat? One comma two eight. Remember, the cat and the trolley now move together. But what was the initial velocity of the cat? Three. Please, let's put this in the calculator. I'm done for the day. Let's see something. Let's see if this would work out nicely for us. 2,6 into bracket, 1,28 minus 3. Check your answer. Negative 4,472. Negative 4,472. I wanted to check your answers. 4,8 and four seven but this one negative what are we proving so the impulse here is what four comma four seven newton seconds to the left i am not writing any direction here because okay let me write direction here because i'm trying to explain this one is to the right because it's positive do you notice check your values four comma four eight and four comma four seven the impulse is the same. Does that make sense? Uh, Tokelo, sir, why was VI equals to zero and not three when we're calculating the change in momentum? VI equal to zero. For which one, Nana? For which one? For which one? I'm done, but this question is important. Let's, Tokelo, why was the N not three? Initial velocity of which one? Tokelo, quickly. For the skateboard the skateboard was stationary the skateboard was the, the skateboard was not moving at three go back to the question probably you lost um sight of the question let me take you back check it is the cat that was moving at three 
Are we okay? The cat was moving at three. Both state boards were stationary. Awesome. Are we okay? Ayabonga also said, oh, all right. It's okay, look, good. Guys, do you see what we did in the last part? Our answers, 4,48, 4, 47. This is just a bit of calculation, uh, the values they gave, but we now believe that the impulse of the skateboard and the cart are the same, but opposite in what direction? This is further explaining Newton's what? Third law of motion. Why is this so? We are further emphasizing Newton's what? Third law of motion. We are now saying equal forces, equal F, equal time, opposite what? Direction. Did this make sense, guys? Did this make sense? Did this make sense? Can I get your thumbs up, thumbs down? I'm done. But before you log out, there'll be information. But let's just check. So we are done with all physics and then we explain. Um, that activity made sense. All right. Now, guys, when we meet the next time, our activities are going to be faster now. We're going to move at a faster pace. Although there is one more thing we need to do. All right. Um, please, before we end this session, we are going to do three types of questions word problems like the one we did today graphs and simultaneous before we can say we are done and then we are going to do um energy in terms of collision all right types of collision these are the things so i'm going to explain types of collision and then we are going to try to look at these three categories of problem what problems graphs and simultaneous what equation i will send you a few questions for you to do both multiple choice all right and every other information will be sent on the group but yes there's questions to do today and tomorrow all right i will give you another open session because i want us to be done with this on monday all right um i'll send you a few questions multiple questions, structured questions that I know you should be able to handle. Look, if you have been with me in this class, this question is easy now. 14 marks, boom, in the bag. You walk past Cape Town and go to the next university. Okay, if you want, you can even go outside the country. You should be able to do this. This question is simple. If you've been following, 10 marks, easy, boom, you get your answer. All right. So I'll send you a few questions that I know you should be able to handle. You should be able to handle this. We spoke about graphs, if you remember. Oh, this one is nice. We spoke, and I won't tell you where I got these questions from, so you don't go and start looking for memos. All right, let me send you a few questions. Though this one too, absolutely beautiful. This is your baby. This is completely done, 11 marks. Okay, yes, I don't want to tell you where I got them from. We did this today, boom, you can answer. Can you see? You can answer this, you can answer. This from yesterday, should be able to answer this. Define impulse, can you see guys? I'm moving from question to question. This you can answer. The just is in graphs. Before collision, after collision. Boom, boom, boom. Done. Ah, this baby work. Guys, we are all we are just one little thing away from completing the uh topic of momentum. When you get back to school, you will be revising now with your teachers. We will continue with one step ahead. That's the dream. When schools open, we are in our second topic. Again, you'll be revising. By the time you guys get to school, second topic, we are in our third topic. End of exam, end of term, we are revising the whole. That's the whole idea. We stay ahead with crazy physics. Okay. Anyway, guys, I'll send you homework on the group. I'll send you your homework on the group. Please, if you are not on the group, make sure you are added to the group. All right. Uh, this lesson will be posted. It's already on YouTube already for the sake of everyone. It's already on YouTube. But our next lesson, okay, we have a lesson on Monday. I'll give you the time and details. The next lesson will post on YouTube. But the next topic now would only be accessible to those who have registered with us. To be added to the group again, that's the link. Just click that link and you'll be added to the group. Thank you so much, guys. 
um, I hope you had a good time today. This is Bishop signing out from Crazy. Minia? Yes, sir. Uh, thank you so much for the lesson. And kindly remember the register, please. It's important. Okay. No, the register I will send on the on the WhatsApp group. Yesterday we I'll send the register, sir, on the WhatsApp. And I got your uh, message. It's just been crazy, you know, um, since yesterday. But I'll sort that out. All right. I'll sort that out. All right, guys. Thank you, Mem Farhana. Thank you so much. Post yesterday's lesson on YouTube. It's already there. Make sure you subscribe. To get all our postings, guys, subscribe. I'll send you the subscribe. Um, I'll send you the subscribe link again so that you can walk through. Subscribe. We will always post videos. We have lessons that we've done. You will always get good lessons from us. All right, guys. Do have yourself a lovely weekend. And um, thank you for all the compliments. Thank you. Thank you, my fellow colleagues who joined in. It's really, really humbling to see teachers join in. Thank you. You have nothing to learn but to contribute. Thank you so much for the humility. We celebrate everyone. Goodbye, guys. Bongi bye. Make sure you are on the group. Bye, Chantel. All right. Thank you. It was a wonderful lesson. Great. You'll be ready before Monday. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, Lumka, it's already on YouTube. All right, guys. Let me love and leave you and have a weekend with family now as well. Goodbye.